Hey guys, so Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegan did a response video to my protein video, the one where I went through several different vegan YouTubers through their What I Ate Today videos and uh, looked at their protein intake, specifically focusing on the essential amino acid lysine. So Ryan did a response to that, and now I am responding to his response. A natural vegan cites a couple vegan dietitians that I've never heard before and are coming up with how much protein vegans really need. For those who don't know, Jack Norris and Jenny Messina are two vegan registered dietitians. Jack Norris is president and executive director of the animal charity Vegan Outreach. He also runs the super detailed, uh, super informative site veganhealth.org, which I highly recommend for information on vegan nutrition. Jenny Messina, again, another uh, registered dietitian, she runs uh, the veganrd.com, another site that I highly recommend. She's also written a bunch of books, including Vegan for Life, along with Jack Norris. They claim vegans need a little more protein because supposedly plant protein isn't as well digested as animal food. Well, I've not heard that before, and unfortunately, they don't provide any footnotes for us to like kind of check that out, but who cares? Let's give them that. The fact that plant proteins are harder to digest than animal proteins and therefore have decreased bioavailability is actually quite well known and widely accepted. The difference isn't because of any inherent difference between animal protein and plant protein itself, but because of what comes packaged along with the protein. Whole plant foods like legumes have protein, of course, like animal products do, but unlike animal products, they also have fiber, which does inhibit protein absorption to some extent. Here's a chart from the World Health Organization's 2007 report on protein and amino acid requirements in human nutrition that clearly shows plant protein to be less bioavailable, meaning less of the protein is actually absorbed by our bodies. For instance, while eggs and meat have true digestibility scores of 97 and 94%, beans and oatmeal are lower at 78 and 86%. An American mixed diet that includes animal products is 96%, while a rice and beans diet is only 78%. Interestingly, when we look at the score for soy protein isolate at 95%, it's very similar to the score for animal products. This makes sense because, again, it's the fiber in plant foods that limits protein absorption, not the protein itself. That's not to say that fiber isn't a good thing. It's a very good thing, and it's really important that we get a lot of it. A lack of fiber is just one of the reasons that animal products are so unhealthy. At the same time, it's important that we realize that the large amount of fiber in a whole food vegan diet does increase our protein needs a little bit. And we can take this into account just simply by eating beans, simply by eating more legumes, and thereby getting the best nutrition possible. So I really wanted to see if she's really getting all that much protein, which I think is way too much, by the way, on a day not of her choosing. So I picked a September 6th What She Ate in a Day video. So once all entered into chronometer, out comes the calories and the amount of protein. She got a mere 49 grams of protein. Mere, I say, that's a good amount. That's what Asino O'Neill was getting, for, more or less. But it's 15% shy of her goal of 58 grams, her minimum goal, and a far cry from the 84 grams she got on her self-selected day. I'll just say this. If you're gonna make a video calling out other YouTubers for not getting enough protein, and you yourself aren't even really getting close to that amount on your what you ate in a day videos, you gotta be really careful. So in the first case, yes, I did cherry pick. I did pick obviously specific what I ate today videos from the various vegan YouTubers that I included in the video. Um, I tried to go with the most recent example, but sometimes those were really dining out heavy, which made it hard for me to um, figure out amounts or even just figure out what was being eaten at all. I tried to find videos that were representative of what they were eating overall, given their other What I Ate Today videos, um, while also trying to find ones that were easy enough for me to, as accurately as possible, guess at what they were eating and uh, enter that into chronometer. For instance, on Freely Sample Day, I had to go back several months to a video that not only included calorie counts, but also included like 
normal foods like grapes and dates, foods that are actually listed in the uh, chronometer database, as opposed to her most recent What I Ate Today video where she eats like a whole bunch of trap. And I don't know what that is, and chronometer doesn't either. In the second case, do as I say, not as I do. Yeah, seriously, uh, Ryan is right here. Uh, this is obviously not like an optimal day of eating for me, the sample day that he chose, September 6th, I believe it was. I do include a disclaimer at the beginning of the video, like I do on all my recent What I Ate Today, saying that this isn't a how you should eat video, but merely an example of how one vegan ate. But still, I am kind of a face for veganism, one of the many faces for veganism here on YouTube. Um, I just hit 40,000 subs, so have a fairly large following. And I think it is my responsibility to represent veganism in the best way possible, especially when it comes to nutrition, which is why I have been making more of an effort to eat uh, really healthfully on the days that I do What I Ate Today videos. And just in general, just even on days that I don't, because it's kind of important. So with that taken care of, let's get back to Unnatural Vegan's main claim that these vegan YouTube ladies aren't getting enough protein. Well, let's look at Freely since she had the lowest amount and she's been a vegan for over eight years now. Well, last year she made a video showing her blood test results. So you'd think if Freely were deficient in protein, after seven and a half years, it would manifest itself maybe into bad blood test results. There's my total protein. Bam, 72. No issues at all. There's no protein deficiency in my body, folks. After 7.5 years as a vegan, so there's no problem at all. Don't worry, you're gonna get your protein. Oh well, if her blood tests are okay, maybe protein deficiency is showing up in her, like her fitness, like she's not getting enough protein to rebuild her muscles. No, take a look, she's a very fit, athletic cyclist, showing absolutely no signs of not getting enough protein. Freely is active and has good blood test results, and so we don't have to worry about protein? How does that follow, exactly? Anecdotes are stories, not evidence. I harp on this a lot in my videos because relying on anecdotes, as Ryan does here, is irrational, <laughs> and it also can lead to some pretty dire consequences. Anecdotes can be used to prove anything. If you want proof that vegan diets are dangerous, you will find anecdotes proving that claim. If you want proof that a meat-centric paleo-style diet is healthy, you will find anecdotes proving that claim. The most we can gather from an individual's personal experience with a particular diet plan, exercise routine, whatever, is that whatever they're doing seems to be working for them, at least currently. And that's it. Everybody is different. That some small group of people seem to be doing fine on low-protein diets, at least in the short term, may just reflect those differences. In reality, low-fat, low-protein, high-carb diets are notorious for having horrible retention rates, and with so many vegans attempting to eat these diets, this may explain why so many vegans don't stay vegan. Could it be that Freely and these other girls, all of them are getting enough protein? Well, the World Health Organization recommends that men and women obtain 5% of their calories as protein, 6% if you're pregnant. This would mean 38 grams of protein for a man, that needs 3,000 calories a day, and 29 grams for a woman using 2,300 calories a day. I don't know where Ryan is getting this information from. Actually, I do. It's not from the World Health Organization. More on that in a moment. But I did find this information from the World Health Organization from that report that I mentioned earlier. The value accepted for the safe level of intake is 0.83 grams per kilogram of body weight per day for proteins with a protein digestibility corrected amino acid score value of one. For someone weighing 140 pounds, which is about 64 kilograms, this works out to about 53 grams of protein per day, so substantially more than the supposed 5% figure. And this is based on a protein digestibility amino acid score value of one. This includes casein, egg white, whey, and soy protein. Whole plant foods, on the other hand, like chickpeas and lentils and whatnot, are all significantly lower. 
So it's reasonable to expect that vegans, and really anyone eating more than just casein and eggs and soy protein, so everyone, uh, should aim for more than 0.83 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. And of course, that means certainly much more than 5% of total calories per day. But remember, a natural vegan is citing these unknown dietitians to me. I don't know who they are. I know who the World Health Organization is, but these dietitians of hers recommend a whopping 58 grams. I mean, who are these people and why is unnatural vegan siding with them over other more reputable sources? So Ryan criticizes me for not using more reputable sources. And yet, what was his source for the 5% protein requirement exactly? Well, I did a little bit of Googling and I found that it comes from a 2007 article from Dr. John McDougall called When Friends Ask, Where Do You Get Your Protein? Where does McDougall get this figure from? I have no idea, since there's no footnote or reference in the article at all. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. I asked that question because it's not like more is better when it comes to protein, because excess protein intake has been linked to disease. Ryan seems to be confusing plant protein with animal protein. While animal protein is problematic for various reasons, plant protein is not. To my knowledge, there is no evidence that a diet high in plant protein uh, is unhealthy. In fact, a six-month randomized controlled trial comparing a low-carb, high-protein, eco-Atkins-style diet with lots of soy and gluten and nuts and oils to a high-carb, low-fat, lacto-ovo-vegetarian plan found that the former resulted in a significantly higher reduction in LDL cholesterol. And to be clear, it likely isn't the protein itself that is the problem, but it's the other stuff that comes coupled with the protein in animal products. So the saturated fat, the cholesterol, trans fat, etc. As the World Health Organization notes, there isn't even enough evidence to define a safe upper limit for protein intake. However, we can be reasonably confident that an intake of twice the recommended intake previously identified as a safe upper limit is likely to be safe given that it equates to intakes of physically active individuals consuming average mixed diets who would otherwise be identified as having healthy lifestyles. As Dr. McDougall reminds us, unlike fat, protein cannot be stored when it's consumed in excess of our needs Protein is broken down mostly by the liver and partly by the kidneys and muscles. Consumption in excess of our needs overworks the liver and kidneys. It can cause accumulation of toxic protein byproducts. I have no idea where McDougall is getting this from. According to the World Health Organization, even for super, super high protein diets of 200 to 300 grams per day, so invariably high animal protein diets, the most widely quoted potential problems relate to renal function and damage. But as discussed above, the evidence for such claims in otherwise healthy individuals does not stand up to scrutiny. In other words, there is no evidence that even incredibly high intakes of protein is problematic for people with functioning kidneys. Just a couple days ago, I did another episode on the doctors, Travis Stork and them. They're obsessed with protein. What's crazy is cheese has gotten a bad rap. Mm -hmm. But if you look at cheese, cheese is actually a really good source of protein. You know, dairy milk is a significant source of protein. And so is unnatural vegan. I disagree with these doctors completely, and I don't really understand why Ryan is mentioning them uh, along with me here in this video. Uh, I don't promote milk or cheese consumption. I don't believe these are healthy foods. They are high in saturated fat and cholesterol and trans fat and low in fiber and antioxidants. They are not healthy foods. The protein sources that I promote are healthy protein sources, healthy plant-based sources like legumes, like chickpeas and lentils and tofu and tempeh and peanuts. All of them have this 
obsession where we need to get enough protein. It's this rare nutrient that's super hard to find. If we don't get it, we're gonna get sick really quickly. Nonsense. I never said that protein is some rare nutrient. It's not at all. It's actually pretty easy to get even on a vegan diet. In fact, most vegans probably get plenty of protein even if they aren't paying attention to their protein intake or even their lysine intake. Just eating typical vegan meals, you know, oatmeal with nuts and bean burritos and faux meats will probably do the trick for most people. It's why my video was specifically catered towards vegan YouTubers eating low-fat, high-carb style diets. Uh, vegans following plans like Starch Solution and Raw Till 4 and 80-10-10, uh, focusing on carbs and eschewing fat and protein, may not be getting enough lysine, as I showed, or even other essential amino acids. Eat a bunch of whole food plants, eat enough calories, eat till you're plenty full, and then you won't have to worry about where do you get your protein? It's just gonna happen naturally. This simply is not true, and again is why I did my video in the first place. Just eating a whole food vegan diet is not enough. If you are not eating legumes and nuts, you very likely are not meeting your lysine needs. All of the What I Ate Today videos that I looked at in my video were full of whole plant foods, and yet they were also lacking in lysine and overall protein. Ryan and other vegans, specifically low-fat, high-carb vegans, seem to be really bothered by my obsession with uh, protein intake, and I really don't understand why. Protein is awesome. Protein is the most satiating of all of the macronutrients. It's cheap and easy to get on a vegan diet. It's delicious in the sense that the high protein plant foods are delicious, chickpeas and tofu and nuts, etc. It's very nutritious since most of the high protein plant foods like legumes are full of important micronutrients like zinc and iron and even phytochemicals. And it makes sticking to a vegan diet easier for most people because, again, it's satiating, it's delicious, and it's nutritious. And finally, there is no evidence that eating more protein on a vegan diet is detrimental in any way. On the other hand, low-protein vegan diets offer several potential problems. The risk for lysine deficiency, less nutrients since high-carb plant foods like fruits and starches are generally less nutrient-dense than high-protein plant foods like legumes. It's less satiating. Again, study after study has found protein to be the most satiating macro. It's less delicious. Let's face it, bean burritos and nut cheeses are the best and are way tastier than all the low-fat stuff. And overall, it's just harder to stick with. Again, low-fat, high-carb diets are notorious for having terrible retention rates. They are really hard to stick with. And that's it. That's my response. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully this video isn't too long. I'm not sure yet. It's probably pretty long. Sorry. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, be sure to subscribe. That's pretty great. And if you want to support me, of course, you can do so at patreon.com slash unnaturalvegan. And that's truly it. Thank you, as always, for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will have a new video very soon.